Good evening, friends, and welcome back. Got a new microphone tonight. Hopefully, I'm sounding good. Um, I know it never seems as loud as some people's channels. I'm not sure why. Um, probably better equipment, right? This is one that plugs into my phone. I record on my phone, so I know when I'm closer to it's better. Um, and there's times, of course, you know, I'm talking to myself here. And a lot of times I know I'm mumbling, and I apologize for that. You probably do it when you paint too, but there's no one listening to you. Anyway, we have an 8x10 Centurion panel tonight. My favorite size. I put on a wash of burnt sienna just a minute ago. Uh, not my usual bright acrylic colors, but uh, using up a tube of burnt sienna here. And it's a good color to tone with too. I'll show you. Played around with a bunch of things. You know me, lately I am really into looking down on these setups. I've done about five of these lately. Um, so uh, what I'm thinking is going to be something along that line. Hopefully we like that. See, we've got our background with our papers. I could, you know, I have tablecloths and small pieces of printed fabric. That would be fun. You might do that. I think I'm going to maybe move that teapot a little left and angle the handle. Just to move, as I look at it through there, I'm going to move it just a little bit for myself. Um, difficult to get just the perfect setup. So I'm going to push it back. I'm going to angle it just a little more. I think that's more attractive to my eye. All right, got a new jar there. I just carried in a whole, I have too many props. I just carried in a bunch of teapots. I was trying to, thinking about, I keep thinking about doing a rectangle canvas. And uh, first I had, I have all these little tiny pitchers, I guess you'd call them. I carried in a bunch of those the other day and tried that. I just carried in a bunch of teapots. I must have 10 teapots, so. Anyway, I hadn't painted this one in a while. It's pretty cute. It's kind of almost like a, a genie pot. <laughs> you know, one you would look at. It's kind of cool. One you would uh, rub and make three wishes, right? Grant, grant us a wish, huh? So, I don't know. That's the one I chose. I think it's pretty cool. Again, that jar is new. That's a new prop. I need to quit buying stuff, but I just love stuff. I went antiquing the other day and came home with that bottle. And uh, look at that bottle. I kind of, isn't that cool? I haven't painted it yet, but you know I will. I love that too. I have a thing about bottles. So, and before that, I bought these two big. Let me show them to you. Maybe you remember, tell me if you do, I don't ever remember Clorox coming in a glass bottle. Um, I bought these brown, aren't they cool, kind of amber colored, and it says Clorox, okay? Um, there's a smaller one, and the bigger one says Purex, and it's actually cut into the glass, see? Purex. Tell me if you remember these things. I, I just five dollars each. I thought that was a great deal. Um, and I painted one of them so far in a still life. See the brown bottle in the back there. So um, I don't know. I just all I remember is Clorox in a probably a plastic jug. And I'm no spring chicken, so don't know how old they'd be. They obviously would be pretty old, wouldn't they? All right, we're going to mix up something very dark. We're going to look through our, our it's by EZL, kind of like a viewfinder. I use my brush to set up where things land. That's how I use it, and I make marks on my canvas. All right, this is one of the ones we'll be looking down on, so that comes with its own challenges, but fun. Right, that bottle up there. It's pretty close to the edge, maybe too close. 
We might move it back. I don't want to catch it with a frame. The apple's pretty low. Paint from life. I mean, if you don't, I'm always saying that. It's a, it's a challenge because, like I said, every little move I make here, my stuff is moving. Wait a minute, let me look at that again. So I think we'll start with the teapot. That's our most important element. And we'll uh, work on sketching it in. Now if you watch the last video with the can of Diet Coke, but um, I know you could hear me somewhat. I was talking in directly into the phone. Um, I just pulled everything over, you know, because this uh, microphone is clipped on my lapel. So I went reaching for something. I yanked my whole tripod down, and the part that plugs in my phone, I broke off. Screwed up the tripod a little bit. Just wasn't thinking. Okay, I'm looking at the shape of this hole. Use that negative space to your advantage, you know. What's that shape of that hole? And we may wipe some of this off even, you know, before we start actually laying paint on so we're not fighting it. Hope everybody's well. Here's the handle, and I'm looking how far past the handle does the edge of the lid come. Try to get that right. And then you can kind of draw it like there's an edge. And then we go over about that far to begin the piece that's in the center. Like I say, use anything you can to help you draw. We had some snow last night, pretty good snow. And uh, I was out in it today and thought, it is pretty. You know, if it wasn't so cold, I thought I could paint in my car. I guess I could paint in the car and run my car the whole time. I just kind of hate to do that. I worry about running the battery down or something. I know that wouldn't happen with it running, but. Definitely very pretty with the snow on the ground. I I was looking at it, I thought you could paint out the window, I suppose, right? I was looking at it through the window, just looking at the colors in the in the shade and uh, snow scenes are beautiful, that's for sure. All right, let's see. This has like a square lid at the top. You know, worse comes to worse. You get to the end and you got to start making adjustments because you didn't nail it and, and that's what you do. Like I said, how can I know it's wrong unless I get something down here? It's only wrong if we leave it, right? Don't 
does take more time to sketch when you're you know doing a looking down at your subject I think maybe not but Ready for spring, ready to get out and paint. Mm. Hmm, what's that shadow coming from? Once again, you know, I have an overhead light and I have a light set up on my still life here and uh, I have to pick the correct shadows like oh, this bottle has a shadow to the left of it that has to be from the overhead light so and I want it to make sense this may be up a little higher than I have it This has a, I'm not sure this particular jar is old. It has this big, large mouth on it, but I thought it would be wonderful for flowers. I'm noticing this shape in here pretty much echoes Kind of that shape. Feeling a little short to me. Let me bring it down a little bit. Went to an opening the other night here in town. Um, Gallery 42. Um, there's always something going on in there. This one was, uh, well, there's art there anyway. There's an exhibit all the time. But um, they had just hung some pieces of Chuck Marshall, who you hear me mention frequently, and his uh, wife, Ann Grimaldi, and another couple. Something about love was the title. But they weren't there for some reason. That's part of the reason I went. You know, you figure they're going to be there, but I didn't get to see them. I could put some solvent on this, and this would move around a little better. Now I'm getting pretty close to the edge, you know, I could run it off, I could, you know, when I get a frame on it, it's going to kind of run into it. Hey, if you um, are an artist, tell me where you buy your frames from. I've been looking around. I oh, used to always buy from um, Frankenframe. I, I've loved them for years, but I'm kind of looking for a different place. I actually had a thing come up on Amazon, and the frames come through Jerry's Artorama, I think, but 
they looked really beautiful. So, frames are not cheap though, are they? Let's see where that goes. Make sure that makes sense. Yeah, it's a big part of your expense with a painting, isn't it? By the way, I started a sale today on my website, just my name, barbarapass.com, if you want to check it out. Um, I tried to give, like, do a set it up with like a code, but apparently you have to do the whole website on sale. I couldn't just like group a group of paintings together, this is what I imagined doing, and then giving out a code. Um, so I, what I had to do was just literally mark down a bunch of paintings. So you just have to scroll through and down and you'll see um, what I've done. A little bit of everything. Some landscapes, some still lifes. So, all right, putting in my darker colors where I see them. For a while, if you remember, after I did that still life with Shelby Keefe, I was, well, same thing, doing this, but then I would first put in my lights because that's what she was doing. I tried that for a while. Doesn't really matter in the end, I don't think, you know, what you do, but, because um, I've always painted dark to light, but if you put your darks down like this, I mean, they're in there, right? I may pull that up a little bit just so I don't end up maybe cutting it off with a frame. You can always do a, um, what do they call them, shadow frame where you set it in. I like those too, I just don't typically use them. I think we'll start with the teapot, just because, no particular reason, and it is I would say it's brass. It leans more toward, you know, a yellow color than anything. What I kind of wish I had, and I, because I work with a limited palette, I, I, yellow ochre would be kind of nice to have. Maybe we'll tilt it down and we'll play around here. Excuse this mess. This is, so I think we'll, Let's make some orange. This is just cad yellow medium and cad red light. Obviously that is very bright. That's a place to start and into the orange um, we'll mix some ultramarine blue. I'm going to want something pretty dark which uh, you can see that pulls it green. We could put some crimson in there. I'm wanting something for the darkest areas of the pot. And we could even probably put a little um, transparent red oxide. I feel like it should be darker. More altering blue. So that's pretty dark. Let me grab a towel. I'm trying to get three values here to work with. I like to I like to work that way. All right. We'll take some of this. There are a few highlights on that pot, not a lot. Let's try some transparent red oxide in that. That's not a bad color at all.
pull some of that real light just for from, from for some highlights. And we may need more paint, but this will give us a start. Um, I'm going. I'm going to try to make a bit more of this. My kind of mid tone. You know, you can always intermix them back and forth. You know that tends that's kind of a yellow ochre, close to a yellow ochre that I made. All right, let's get back up here. And you could do this with palette knife if you wanted, which I do enjoy working with palette knife. I'm using a fairly big brush. This is a. Hmm. Liquitex says number four bristle flat. I have a lot of brushes. I have a lot of my mother-in-law was an artist, so let me show you over there on the shelf. There's like three containers of brushes there. Not all stuff that I would use, but um, plus I have lots in a bag. And she has some interesting ones actually over there. She has. Um, the kind that you use to do watercolor where you wet it and you flip it. Have you seen that brush? And it comes to a very a, a point. Um, there's one of those over there. I can't imagine I'll ever use it, but all right, we got our brush. We're going to thin this down a little bit. We're going to go after the darkest darks that I see over there first. And I don't mind if our tone sticks comes through some. Just thinking, isn't art funny? I mean, we're all over the place with pricing. Um, I saw a lady post a painting. I don't remember her name, and I wouldn't say her name if I did. But she posted this painting on Instagram, and I liked it a lot. Um, eight by ten, this size. So I, I thought she said, you know, follow the link. It's on sale. So I got over there, and uh, it was uh, fourteen fifty, one thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. I just, I don't know. I sometimes think, why do you think it's so? Why do you think it's worth that? I. Don't know. It's all subjective, isn't it? And the. You know, the bigger you are, the more you ask, and this is part of the reason I I don't I am not and do not plan to be. I have I don't want to say I have never. I've been in a gallery. I did that gallery show in the spring, and another time I was in a gallery for a while. But I don't plan to, other than maybe a temporary show. I don't plan to do that, and I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of artists see that as, you know, a level of success. But when you get into a gallery, then you're pricing higher to your customers, and you can't undersell your gallery. So, you know, everything you sell needs to be that gallery price. Um, I just rather sell directly to my customer. That's me. And if you're lucky, you've got a good gallery, but you hear horror stories too where they don't pay well or on time. They leave your work, they don't even have your work out. I've seen that in a lot of cases with friends, and you know, they don't even have it out. Or they dictate to you what they'd like you to paint. So I, I don't, for myself, that's me. I don't see that as a, um, that you're a successful artist because you're gallery represented, but that's me. So I will stay probably affordable and I will continue to deal directly with people. That's what I like. You know, but no matter how 
affordable, and I know I am because I paint with a lot of artists, and I'm always, I know I'm, I know my price point is good. But still, you know, you get people that reach out and they want a price like for a pet portrait, and you never hear back. So in my head, I assume they think I'm too high, and I think, my goodness, shop around. But you know, a lot of people don't buy art much. They don't have any idea um, what's expensive and what's cheap and nothing to compare it to. But you need to shop around. Main thing is choose someone. You like their work. You want to be happy with it. You know, don't ever just choose for the price point. Ask to see their work, you know. People, <laughs> I paint with a couple groups, you know that, and the one, this has been years ago, but one of the gals, she ran into a man in the parking lot and he had a couple dogs, and she likes dogs, and she said, oh, can I take their picture? Well, she got to talking to the man, and without even having any idea if she could even paint, he commissioned her to do, do a big painting of his two dogs. And we were all like, why would he do that? You know, he didn't even, he didn't even really know, you know, if she could paint. Um, and he was willing to pay her like, you know, $400, which is not nothing. And uh, ended up finding out in the end, he wanted to date her. So that was his way you know, of doing that. So that's really what it was about. But I thought you just can't assume because someone tells you they paint, they know how to paint. And some people think they know how to paint. They they have this opinion of their self. I know a lot of those people that they're there, that they're good. So anyway, just check out their work and shop around if you're interested in a commission. See if their price is fair. I mean, I've got some little details on this. I'm going to want to put in at the end. And I'm mixing more paint as I go too, which um, is going to, you know, wouldn't have to be, but it's going to be different probably than the previous stuff I mixed. So uh, that's okay. Husband and I just made reservations today to. I'm not telling you when, but we're going to go up and rent a cabin um, in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. He lived there as a boy. His parents owned a resort, which he wished they'd kept. Um, and he lived there like from age two to age seven. And you wouldn't believe how much of that he remembered. It made such an impact on him. And he actually went up there a few years ago. His brother passed away and he took some of his brother's ashes and put them in the lake there. And it, what was amazing was, it's a kind of like time had stood still there. Um, he kept calling me up and the things that he remembered as a boy, like all of the cabins, it wasn't a resort, they were privately, individually owned, but all the cabins for the resort were still there. Um, he even got inside one of them, he met a guy and the guy took him in. There was a bank in town that <laughs> he remembered going in and there was a lumberjack mural on the wall and it always stuck with him. It was still there. And still there after oh, 70 years. Um, so we're going back up. He's afraid it won't be enough for me to do, but you know, um, we have a lake view. I'll be taking my paints, and I love 
old buildings and it's an old town so I will be fine I'm looking forward to it so excited about it I'm going to go ahead and block some of this in and then we'll come back with some detail and you could do that. You know, you could just block in the whole thing with a mid-tone value and come back and add your lights and darks. Absolutely, you could do it that way. I think that's kind of what Helen Van White did, if I remember. brush is pretty chunky for what we're doing here but I want to stay with it as long as I can. Now down in here there's like uh, stripes I'm going to, just for a minute, we'll go switch that smaller brush, or a smaller brush. Little handle on the top is darker. You know, and you can decide again, like always, how much detail you want. Trying to get some color everywhere and then we'll reassess. And we may just move on and come back to this. You know, we got it blocked in. All right, so. Let's get some color on the apple. The outer edge is a darker red. I'm using the same brush and I didn't really clean it and uh, that's generally how I work. don't want to divide the apple you know in half it is um, green and red you may not want it that way in the end but that is how it is it's not a very vibrant green though it's kind of a some of that may be due to that that the lights not directly on it too That might help pull it together with, you know, give it better car color harmony too with the teapot because, you know, it reads kind of greenish too. I'm gonna get a little cleaner green as I get toward the, toward the front.
And we'll see what we think of that. We got some color on there. This will probably, this bottle will be challenging. Um, glass is the colors you see through it and the colors sometimes around it. A lot of times it tends to be, uh, I make a gray and that's what I work with. I've got blue paper behind it, so um, I will keep it more in that blue family. And like with the teapot, I'm well, we have. I'm over here mixing three values again. Light, dark, mid. Someone said it'd be nice to have a camera on my palette, and it would, I guess, wouldn't it? You know, I do see some people on here, I think they hold their phone the whole time they film because they go from wherever they're looking. Um, I would think, though, that might make you dizzy. I did, I do have one of those things that clips on my forehead <laughs> that the phone will clip into. The trouble is, you're above my eye view, so you're not really, you're above where I'm looking, so <sighs> that idea didn't work. Seemed like a good idea, but it didn't work. All right, let's put in the darks that we see. And this is more about Everything is always more about value than it is color. Feels a little strange to me, but we'll see in the end how it feels. I did something that I normally don't do the other night. Um, I think what I was painting. Oh, it was a still life that I showed you. And I um, was painting it from life like I do this. And uh, was struggling with this. Because you know you're looking down on it. Um, so what I ended up doing was I photographed the setup. And I went back and forth on my iPad. I photographed the painting back and forth, back and forth to see where I was off. That was very helpful, really. I normally don't work that way, you know, usually it's all from life. But again, you know, every time I step forward and backward, things are moving. So, uh, just a suggestion for you. It, it, it really helped me to refine it and get what I needed. We have a Cincinnati Museum Center. It's called down here at Cincinnati. And um, got an ex interesting exhibit that just opened up on Pompeii. I feel like I'd like to go see that. Um, something that makes you almost like feel the explosion. I guess it's like a movie. And then uh, they have some of the 
it's so funny, you know, I used to see those bodies, and I never really gave it much thought. Obviously, they're cast of the bodies. You know, they left a shape in the ground, and they made a cast of them. But uh, I guess I never gave it a lot of thought. We got some interesting stuff going on over here with highlights and shadows from the jar. see what's over there, you know, with this being all clear glass. I think, actually, I think their neck is coming down here. Yeah, I kind of quit buying teapots. I just used to joke that I'm an addict. I'm still buying props, though. I mean, it's so fun, though, you know? It makes it exciting to get something new and want to paint it. shadow out here. Um, like I said, the uh, light's coming through it, so glass is interesting. Let me know how my sound is tonight. Hopefully, good. Be nice if it was better even than the other one. I said I don't know what people use. I, I've had this other one I had for years, the mic, and I ordered the same kind. I liked it. I. this feels symmetrical, you know. I need to uh, think about the shape of this. This too. I 
The little blackberries are basically a purple. Um, they're not a difficult thing to paint. Um, it's more about the outside shape of them and then some highlights, little stems and leaves, you know. They're basically, except for the highlights, like one value. So we'll block them in. So let's um, get some of this background color in and then we'll come back. How long we've been at this? That's taken a while. I apologize for that. Um, part of it's the difficulty of the objects, you know. And maybe it'd be more interesting to, to focus on those for you. And, and maybe do the background when you're not here. Let's think about that. Okay. Let's get our palette knife. This is more fun to watch than painting in the background, right? So we'll mess with some of the objects instead, and then I'll maybe do the background on my own. Trying to explain the pot a little bit. some highlights. Like the little blackberries are, you know, um, and those, they probably are a little cooler as I look there. So I think we may actually use some blue. You know, and they have a little leaf on the top. And of course their stem, which I probably will use a palette knife to put in in the end. Um, very dirty brush, so. And then the apple, of course, it will have a stem too. Um, but I gotta get all my shadows in. There's shadows here that will explain the blackberries. Got 
try to keep those thin and sometimes more translucent so they feel like shadows. And then we've got the nice shadow under the pot that um, actually the stem goes out there. That's what that is. Now would it be there if the, I think, I think that's right. Again, I'm dealing with two light sources. Ideally, you have a studio where you have north light that doesn't change and you paint in the daylight and I mean that would be ideal circumstances, but most of us don't have everything just Let's see, is that about right? Maybe not And I may just run this on down rather than have a little negative space there between the, the jar and the... Like I said, there's a lot of detail in this pot. Um, if you're doing it, you'd have to decide how much you feel is important. All right, well, I'm not going to keep you because it's been 52 minutes. I'm going to keep working though. Um, maybe I'll show it to you next time. But, you know, a lot of it's just boring stuff. We're going to, uh, I've got blue here. You know, I've got my papers behind it here. And then, uh, like I said, I've got a thing to line these up with one another because it's one piece of paper. More like that. And then this is a green piece, so. You know, hopefully I'll feel like I've got enough. I mean, I could always add another element up here, but again, I'm trying to cut down on 8 by 10 and not have quite as many items, but I'm kind of liking it. Um, not quite there with a lot of the things, you know, even the pot. Little things like that. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. Um, make it out a little liner brush even like and put the bottom of that stem on. Just little things. But you know, I could I could develop and develop and develop this pot, but I don't know how far I want to go with it. You know, I want to try to suggest things like there's little lines there, but I don't want. You know me. I always want it to be painterly and uh, not explain too much. So I'm kind of liking it. Hope you do too. All right. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to my new subscribers. We've got some new subscribers and uh, paint fairly often do a lot of still life so if you don't mind that when the weather gets better I'll be getting outside some and hopefully take you along with me but uh, if you haven't subscribed please do that help my channel grow it's free I don't bother you I promise all right you have a wonderful evening and watch for me again good night